Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. This is another one of those topics uh, that has an awful lot of opinion about it and a lot of misconceptions. I am probably going to tell you a couple things that I disagree with out there, but for the most part, uh, there's a lot of ways of doing this. Uh, I'm going to go through my process for doing it. Uh, you may not have access to the same kinds of materials I do, uh, but at least it'll give you an idea of the things that are necessary. So first off, I don't buy any of the products that are usually recommended for this. I don't buy a bottle of bacteria. I don't buy uh, any sort of conditioners or any of that sort of stuff. I never have, and I probably never will. My simple process is when I set up an aquarium, I'm actually in the process in my fish room right now of setting up uh, five more, uh, the bottom row of the new part of the recycled rack. I'm setting that up finally. I either put in old aquarium water and a bit of tap water uh, and obviously if you this is your first aquarium you can't do that but if you are in a place where you at least have access to an aquarium society uh, do the most important part you can put like pure fresh tap water and that's fine get something in there that's going to circulate it with whatever filtration system you're going to use either box filter underground filter hob it doesn't matter and then if you, like I said, if you have an aquarium society, uh, if you know somebody there, get a few pieces of plant. Uh, maybe even if you really trust the person and the quality of their aquarium keeping, a uh, small bit of gravel, a small bit of old filter media, any of that sort of stuff is more than enough to get a tank going. So what I would do here, obviously, I wouldn't necessarily take it out of these tanks, but I would take some uh, bit of Java fern, some Java moss, a uh, little bit of gravel out of the gravel filter, some of the old media, I would put that in the aquarium, or possibly just also put it right into the filter, and I would let that percolate for oh, probably about a week, and then I would introduce, though even though I probably already have introduced it with the plants, I would throw in some snails, I would throw in some uh, scuds, I'd throw in some... Uh, cherry shrimp and probably a, a bit of old tank water if I hadn't already done that and I would also get it going for a little while and I leave that for another uh, four or five days I mean there's no real time frame for this and then if the fish I'm going to be adding to that tank are uh, fragile or I'm worried about their health or they're coming from a situation where I think they might be a little bit stressed to begin with I would take some of these fish here uh, not necessarily these particular ones, but I would take some guppies or some platies, half a dozen or so, throw them into the aquarium, and I would feed them, and they would go do their stuff, and that would help get the cycle going. Cycling is a word I really don't like to use, but it, what it is is just getting your nitrogen cycle in the process of functioning, getting the bacteria, the nitrosomonas, the nitrobacter, and getting them in the sufficient populations in their filter and everywhere else, uh, to take whatever fish food you've fed that has gone through the uh, metabolism of a fish and come out as poop uh, to process that so that you don't have a spike of ammonia or nitrite and then of course uh, accumulate as uh, nitrate. I don't usually concern myself with this because if you have a reasonable uh, filtration system and you're doing the most important part of all this which is patience uh, you won't really have any issues with that. Uh, someone actually in the comments section posted a really interesting idea for an upcoming experiment I'm going to do. I am going to take um, two aquariums, probably one of the ones I'm going to be setting up, and I am going to put in one of them a nice established box filter. Another one I'm going to have to boil it or something to get, make sure all my media is sterile. I am going to put that in the other one. Uh, going to uh, set them up with you know plants and that sort of stuff and fish exactly the same thing I'm telling you here right now and I'm going to put in uh, the same as well as close as I can in biomass uh, fish into both tanks and then I'm going to feed them and I, I am going to test for any kind of spike in uh, ammonia or nitrite uh, during this whole process. I can tell you right now that most likely I am not going to be able to find anything in them. But because I'm going to film the whole process, you might be able to see a little bit of change in fish behavior or something along those lines. So we'll see. I've been uh, wrong before, so it could happen again easily. So the things I tend to avoid when cycling uh, an aquarium 
I don't use, I mean, I've heard this one before, put a dead something in there, like meat or fish or whatever, and let them rot, and that will get the process going. Not a good idea, because the bacteria that feed on rotting things is not the same bacteria that feed on, uh, like, the poop from fish, the detrivores. The nitrosomonas and nitrobacter are the ones you're trying to grow, and there are also other beneficial bacteria that you're trying to grow. But those that feed on rotting material, like the, well, create the rot, uh, those funguses and bacteria are not something you're trying to encourage. And if you gather from all the uh, ammonia tests I've been doing lately, it works, but it is definitely a long-term process. And in the end, you're not going to have a, a stable environment. You're not going to have that balance you require. Which brings me to another couple comments I've gotten recently. People want to know whether or not there's a good process for, or a quick process for getting a hospital tank up and running or a quarantine tank. And the short answer is no, there, there's no such thing as a short answer for any of this. You can get a tank relatively uh, cycled, <laughs> I hate using that word, uh, but you don't have a balanced system. And then when it comes to a hospital tank, you really want something that's really balanced you want something very stable because you're already dealing with a fish that is quite in distress. And as far as quarantining, it could be the same thing. You may have uh, fish that are you know, not in the best of condition and they need to be fattened up and that sort of stuff. So in those cases, if you want to set up a quarantine tank, you're going to have to have one set up or, or a hospital tank, either one. Set up an aquarium, put some hardy fish in it. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, having uh, some plants is always a good idea too. And when you go to get that, uh, those fish that you're going to quarantine or you need to put them in the hospital tank, remove the fish that you have in there as the ones that are just keeping it uh, properly activated and then put in whatever you're going to quarantine or hospitalize. And that will probably give them the best chances. Of course, that means you may end up having to throw out all the plants and clean the aquarium out if uh, it really does go south, uh, but it's better, it'll give the best chance, I should say, for those fish to uh, survive that. Now, from my perspective for setting things up, I am always going for that stable environment. That is the thing I look for, and it does take longer than the four to six weeks that most people recommend. Uh, but again, this is a patience thing, not a let's get this done and, and get things in there and fill the tank up as quickly as possible because uh, those sorts of things usually lead to possible errors. I mean, sometimes it works. I mean, it depends on your source of fish, of course, and all that sort of stuff as well. So again, this is one of those things, like I said, has uh, a lot of different opinions about it. And uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, absolutely none of the stuff that you can buy commercially, I know that may uh, be... Uh, you know, that's something that a lot of people will appreciate, but it is not necessary. I've never done it, and I've been doing this for a very long time, and I've set up many thousands of aquariums, and it's easier just to go to, a, like, a, an aquarium society or a neighbor or something like that and go that route, and if none of that is available to you, uh, go to the pet store, get your equipment, um, set it up, get water going in it, and then uh, pick up a small bits of plant, like java moss, java fern are really good for this sort of thing. They're a very tough plant and they should be able to handle uh, any kind of spikes. Uh, get some snails, they should be very easy to pick up from a pet store. Uh, get that going and then uh, add some very hardy fish and let that go for a while. Like I said, take your time, be patient, and don't rush it. And then, like I said, there's no real short answer to this. These tanks here have been set up for quite some time now, but uh, if I follow the process that I'm doing, believe it or not, in roughly the same amount of period of time that uh, people will say a cycle would happen, the tank is relatively stable, uh, usually about a month to six weeks. And then from my perspective for what I'm happy with, about six months. That's usually how long it takes for me to be happy with an aquarium and for it to look the way I want it to and look like these. <laughs> So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, leave lots of comments, let me know what you think, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video, and bye for now.